There's so much to talk about in the West this week. Oh my, bomb cyclone. Everyone's talking about that. Everyone's talking about the bomb cyclone. Okay, that's an easy one. What about the coal? What about the coal coming down the Rockies? Extra coal. What about what about that big prairie mid-latitude cyclone making a bunch of weather there, making a bunch of snow this week in the prairies? Man, there's a lot to talk about on the Bad News Show this week. And there also is some snowfall warnings still continuing down there in the BC Mountain Passes. If you are driving overnight tonight in the BC Mountain Passes, oh my, she's ugly. It's really ugly. This is the Bad News Weather Show. Caribou Weather News! Let's go! There it is. This is bad news. My God. Falling out right now. Anything could happen. Get on! Wow. I'll watch the video later. Feel the heat. Try mopping this. Oh, yeah, I'm still on some restrictions in Facebook for the next three days. So, weather watchers, uh, sorry, I'm not able to do my job for you, and that really, really sucks. Really sucks. So, uh, I aim to say a little less on Facebook so that I stay out of trouble. Meanwhile, over on Blue Sky, the American Storm Chasers are getting a load of me for the first time, some of them there. And uh, this is a video that I put out there yesterday, and I'm just describing it. And he says, uh, Canada man describes snow. Go follow. Yeah, well, that's wicked, dude. That was the highlight of my miserable day. Well, it snowed and snowed and snowed. Someone must be winning the Grey Cup because the phone is dinging and dinging and dinging. Karen Richards, who's at our show always, is down there at the Grey Cup right now. She's in Vancouver watching, I believe it's the Argos and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers going. I tried to find it somehow to watch online and I couldn't uh, without paying someone a bunch of money. So here we have uh, some post-frontal showers and whatnot, some convective cells. There was a lot of cumulus and towering cumulus in the interior today. I always saw some, some it made, made it look like it wanted to make a few lightning strikes, but then they just kept kind of uh, stalling out and dying out, so they couldn't do that. But you can see how this uh, flow is just coming into southern BC right there, and it is giving some of those mountain passes tonight some nasty conditions. And you can also see from this flow, another thing you can deduce is how things are generally almost pointed at this area right here of the California and Oregon coast. And that seems to be like the target for where things are going to move through to uh, this week and come hit. Just some snowfall to remind you of going on still tonight between Hope and Merritt on the Coquihalla. 10 to 15 centimeters additional falling. So prepare for winter driving. Why are you going over the Coquihalla? What are you doing? How come you're not paying attention to the weather? Oh, you're from Vancouver and you just thought, oh, it's nice here. It must be nice everywhere. Remarks. Pacific onshore moisture combined with a series of uh, upper disturbances will continue to bring 10 to 15 centimeters of snow tonight into tomorrow morning so that's all stacking up there as you saw and it's also stacking up there down in the crow's nest over the uh, crest and selmo pass and the paulson now through tonight this frontal system pushing through the region bringing heavy snow gusty winds some blowing snow maybe some uh, poor visibility furthermore bands of snow showers will set up late this evening before tapering off near midnight as the air mass will be generally cool and unstable snowfall accumulation will be highly variable so the uh, uh, convection uh, taller storms that are uh, the cells that are closer together, you know, tighter, more compact and making more snow in a localized place as opposed to uh, rod and widespread. Other than that, we've already got winter storm watch on for Saskatchewan and Manitoba and Western, yeah, for this week, a strong low pressure system will be approaching. So it's a lot of this mess that's just come through here is going to reform into a low as it often does on the prairie side. And that will bring freezing rain, snow, strong winds to much of eastern Saskatchewan, western Manitoba beginning Monday evening. They just had a bunch of snow there yesterday, last night. So some of those places have seen snow now. Precipitation in many areas will start out as rain or freezing rain, but will transition to snow as colder air gets wrapped in the system. Because we got this cold air coming on down the Rockies. We're going to be talking about lots this episode. And we've been talking about here a lot lately, uh, the last couple of days at least. Blizzard conditions are possible in some areas. They may not be, uh, you might not get a blizzard warning because it may not last for the correct amount amount of time but conditions that are blizzard like could happen for a period of time widespread snowfall of 15 to 30 centimeters is likely possible more over the higher terrain of western manitoba the higher terrain of western manitoba uh, okay in the wake of the system a much colder air mass will be in place with daytime highs in the minus 5 to 10 range so it will cool down for you in the prairies other than that not too much going on in canada until you get uh well we always have bad weather up here this is bad weather central lately so i got wind warning forever and they're just used to it up there so we're not even going to talk about that anymore freezing drizzle in quebec and just some scattered remnants over here uh for special weather statement low barometric pressure will coincide with high astronomical tide to produce high water levels there in southern newfoundland so here's our jet stream right now dynamic disturbance down there in the uh, south of the united states pay attention if you are uh, living in the southern of the united states this week going to be a lot of weather coming at you this whole thing is going to wrap around and do crazy things it's going to look quite remarkable as we get going playing through the loop so you can still see a bit of an onshore offshore onshore flow 
onshore flow there diminishing and then that cooler air pushing down into bc pushing down trying to establish itself and now we have this new super cyclone forming itself it could be a bomb cyclone could be real serious could be real big and uh this guy here now uh sitting itself into a mid-latitude cyclone in the prairies and we will watch how this sort of uh continues to look at now it makes some crazy looking eyes there with a fucked up nose so uh here's the two uh storms here and this other little storm over here so uh, from the two eyes and a fucked up nose there it goes and uh now it's like a, a fucked up mustache kind of thing looping around there and uh wow that's going to be quite the event for you over there on that end of the mustache and uh this is going to be quite the event for us on this end of the mustache and we got to have this coal there blasting on down coal there blasting on down it's going to try to establish itself i don't know how how far into southern BC this coal will be allowed to go. It may sort of stop in the caribou kind of and it will be I mean, you'll have below seasonal temperatures in the south but you may not get the 15 20 25 below so we're going to be watching that over the next bunch of days but uh there's going to be cold air in bc very cold uh miserable shitty crazy cold and I, i'm really concerned it's going to stay around for a long time yeah and like too long well it can't be that bad i mean look at here's the surface temperature there but it can't be that bad oh, oh my what's that well no that's that's up there that's okay no that's oh boy that looks kind of cold that night well it's getting a little warm no oh, actually look at okay whoa it's coming down the rockies folks oh boy all right let's have a look at a little surface analysis some precipitation here and uh, there's our flow sort of still coming into bc wrapping in the south there giving us a little bit of a nice looking storm down there in the u.s you got going on here coming this week and wow wow and that's what pushes up into manitoba joins with some of that colder air right there and kablamo kablamo uh, it's going to be some pretty windy conditions on the backside of that. And look at this uh, storm starting to form here. Off of this is the GD, uh, uh, this is the Canadian model, the GDPS. And see this uh, storm starting to form. And we can see that cold air screaming down. That's uh, high 20, 1040, that high. That's fucking 1049. So cold that uh, your balls will freeze off. Careful. I mean, people could die in that kind of cold. Uh, at nighttime, it happens very easily. Frostbite is a big thing in Canada. You wouldn't believe it. Well, here's our storm. Wait a second. What did this model say? 972, 964, 951, 951. That's not bad. That's fucking boring. What's, we got to find a better one than that. Okay, here we go. What's the GFS saying? Canadian model so conservative conservative Canadians being all polite it's like well it's not that bad 943 whoa wow that's uh way deeper than the conservative well it's only seven millibars deeper but it's actually look at how tight that is it's wrapped it's wicked here in the uh, prairies it's just a uh, pounding up there you're gonna see a lot of uh really miserable weather like they said there near blizzard conditions already got that uh already got that watch out for you there in the storm hanging around for a couple days trying to uh well rapidly weakening as it does and and then maybe what we see is like a series of successive lows and they're going to start spinning around each other there going to go down the dish drain uh, you know down the drain together fujiwara around i guess something like that you might call it slam in there but uh look at the high still established 1035 wait what's that doing down there that's not good that's too cold for me man british columbia looking like it's gonna see some cold weather we want storms to pound into us and knock that back up we don't want to be on the cold side of the jet stream no no we don't well, actually what we want is for the uh, weather to pound in give us so much precip 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 maybe by the end of the month i don't know so much precip that there won't be a drought again for years but maybe not enough precip all at once that you know rock slides happen and landfalls and roads wash away and that kind of nonsense and horseradish what is your favorite temperature what would you what would what is the Mine perfect is temperature 180 degrees <laughs> well you see yeah my kids were here for a week and uh whoa look at that cold uh oh my kids were here for a week and that uh, kept me from feeling very animated when I want to make a forecast video, you know? So I just feel extra animated tonight. Like, I just want to be extra ridiculous. Being prepared! Being prepared! Been very serious. And, like, they're upstairs and they're, they're doing their thing. They're reading their drawing. And I'm down here talking. But it's like, I don't want to be too obnoxious, I guess, when there's people in the house. And nine, uh, strong, strong low there. Strong. So there's our bomb cyclone. It's going to maybe drop twice the because 24 millibars in 24 hours would be the characteristics of a bomb cyclone well this bugger may double that right may may even be beyond that so here we can see that cold air really sitting there in bc still on 
Thursday. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't like it. I don't like it. It doesn't warm up much during the day. South gets a little bit okay. You may be above zero. Uh, good for you, you lucky buggers. Uh, yeah, at least at nighttime, you won't be above zero. But during the day, it's going to seem a little better than it will here at night. Uh-oh. That's, I don't like those colors. That's in the 20s. And uh, up there's uh, maybe even closer to 30s by Fort Nelson on the peace side. Ooh. No. Oh, yeah. And it just doesn't want to seem to go away much. This blue pale dot is planet earth every bugger who ever called you a snowflake lived right here look at the snowflakes so there's uh snowflakes right here going on there sunday night so there's our snowfall warning showing up there still in southern bc getting the snow and you can see we have like uh flurries continuing into monday flurries but nothing too nuts you know maybe a little bit down in that southeastern corner you're going to be seeing some snow down there yeah that's quite likely wow uh, those storms in texas and oklahoma and places like that look really jacked uh concerned for how bad the storm is going to be down there this week and it's our low upper level low in the gulf there just kind of still hanging around sending uh, the moisture on and you can see though that the flow is really directed at this area sort of on the oregon coast on the california coast we'll come back to that oh or a line of storms looking dangerous there the phone is dinging i wonder if that means that someone's won the gray cup by now it quite likely means that okay so let's watch how we have some developments of storms here we got a couple different ideas but this is ECMWF's idea that upper level low just keeps established there and it just keeps being the the feed the mechanism that's giving us still those post frontal showers and uh snow flurries and whatnot but here we see a Monday afternoon the first sign of our low turning up and it's coming in here hot it's coming in hot and it's going to start making its drop pretty quickly here Mm, when well it's already a thousand now yeah it's hitting midnight dropping dropping looking and we looking like it wants to get organized so there it goes starting to drop down now, how far can she go how far can she go look at all that snow going on in manitoba this week man gonna be wicked oh look at that thunderstorms down there and a big low over the great lakes weather all across the the everywhere make sure you're paying attention this week man no matter where you live in the continent something wicked's gonna happen something wicked's gonna happen and watch how fast that fast this bomb starts to bomb down bombogenesis there uh cyclogenesis coming down quickly 974 see some strong winds down there in the uh very bottom end of it because we got this high up here in that cold air and this warmer air is going to be knocking kind of against it we're going to have some strong winds into the caribou into the prince george into the northern bc strong winds along the coast we're going to see probably waves like in the 30 40 maybe even 50 feet i don't know something like that is going to because you look at how tight these isobars here this bomb cyclone down to 944 now in this animation so uh ecmwf seems to think it gets down to about 940s uh, we've seen some that say it goes a little deeper seen some that say it goes a little shallower i'm not convinced it will not go shallower because you watch, watch this is that cold air streaming down streaming down on wednesday morning tuesday evening that cold air coming down the rockies even trying to touch into below zero temperatures in northern texas even so that is how far this is going down now what's this cold is the flashpoint for all the anger right well, this guy starts to become occluded now he's starting to get kind of wrapped the cold air is feeding in and the, the warmth will start getting cut off and you'll start to see him uh later on wednesday start weakening as that happens that occlusion happens but it will be really really interesting to see what kind of winds are coming out of this what kind of uh waves will be coming out of this very dangerous conditions and then we have this atmospheric river that's going to be just pounding into california into oregon um we'll see where the fire hose stops at this seems to be a little more south than we saw yesterday but you know we'll see we'll see how the thing uh the thing where the thing stops pointing at so it's you know a little bit of flurries and whatnot into the interior into the rockies and whatnot but really we're sitting with this coal being the thing that that keeps us uh really protected from this storm coming in which you know sucks for us because we'd rather have that storm come in bring us some precipitation maybe not like they're getting down here no we don't want that but we'd uh, rather have a little bit of southwest flow warm things up a little bit no no look at this high screaming on down screaming on down thursday morning what's it looking like for temperature all the way down almost to texas still almost to texas the cold and we see temperatures in the 20s below in the peace in northern bc maybe taking a 
reach down into French George at night getting cold. So watch your local forecast as we get into this uh, forecast period. I'm sure by Tuesday or Wednesday we'll have better idea yet again on those temps. And, you know, that's that's more or less how things are going to go. So atmospheric river event into California. We have a large snowfall event happening in the prairies this week. Got another low there in Ontario. Finally, as this uh, guy moves on through, moves through into the uh, New York area. A uh, whole successive series of thunderstorms and disastrous uh, consequences may arrive from that. That's a pretty good tornado setup. I'm almost certain of that. And we see the cold coming down. We're really going to be on the contact of that. And that's probably going to introduce uh, breezy conditions at times too. So that's the thing I'm not really happy about as well. Might be quite windy down those iso bars. So watch for that this week. And then we'll see if we get some snow later in the week from this. We'll see about that, but that atmospheric river really disappointing for a number of days along that U.S. coastline. So really concerned for their precipitation amounts, really concerned for what that could mean for them. And as we get into this week, we'll look at yeah things more closely. All right, Brandon, how about here? We're almost lost by two. That's these windy, windy conditions that we'll really be watching at. Rindy conditions out there in the North Pacific. I don't know if anyone wants to be sailing around this week. I think it's a really bad idea. Watch out when this low comes together, and it comes together quick on Tuesday. Uh, some of the wind gusts in there into the hundreds, into the 120s, maybe higher, 130, 140s in places, sure. And that's going to make for very large surf, very large waves, going to be quite impressive. I think even for uh, areas along the BC uh, coast, you're going to see very very strong winds gonna see some of those winds inland be strong at times because this guy's pushing and push against that colder air so you can see here on the iso bars that will be stronger winds on wednesday so maybe we said tuesday stronger winds uh i i guess we'll amend yesterday and we'll say probably looking more like Wednesday. Well, maybe Tuesday and Wednesday. Just be be aware if you have work in the bush this week that, or uh, you you know be prepared for possible power outages and things like that. We had power outages in the shoe swap last night. Many power outages. So these are the kinds of crazy things that can happen when all of Western Canada is facing different effects from the grips of winter settling in with vigor and anger and Pacific passion yes yes this is the carry weather dude youtube channel and sometimes we uh sometimes we just got to kind of enjoy the wildness of everything that's going to be coming at us this week so uh stay tuned tomorrow we'll probably have some some more spectacular details some more specifics on to who's going to get how much wind and what but i think you know the storm hasn't developed yet we don't have a, a we don't have a, a total agreement on it, but it looks like more and more the models are coming together. More and more they're starting to say the same things. More and more they're starting to agree. If uh, you are in the blue sky, do find me there, Joey. Only pretty easy to find uh, in the uh, description down below. You can find more contact info for things like that and my Patreon. If you feel like supporting me, become a channel member if you'd like, or just keep liking, sharing, subscribing, coming by and leaving comments and helping the algorithm machine because it does make a big difference for me in the depths of the winter here. Many of you don't know me because uh, you're sort of new to the channel and know my story but uh, I'm Joey only and uh, yeah I've been uh, living up here in Wells a long time now I fight wildfires in the summer I like to climb mountains I like to chase thunderstorms I've been forecasting for interior weather and wilderness watchers this Facebook group I started and it's quite big now in the BC interior been doing that now for over 10 years and people have come to rely on me and I started this YouTube channel to uh, talk to people more and talk to people more especially it was kind of my sobriety project and it was also because uh, I was getting put in Facebook jail too often I needed a way to keep being able to say things to people so i developed this channel but uh you know also as a sobriety uh, project uh, a number of years back you know i had a, a bit of a nervous breakdown and uh haven't you know things got hard for a little while I decided to get sober i decided to try to change my life and i'm coming out of my shell more and more you know and uh people call on me and say joey i want to get sober and you know i'm i'm there for you i'm do the best i can to uh help my friends and help you through this so uh take uh take have some strength there, have some heart, have some passion, have some belief in yourself because uh, you are worth it. You know, that's my message for you today. Uh, take care of yourself. Treat yourself good. Do something nice for yourself. Uh, give yourself, uh, you know, an extra little present, whatever that is, a little extra, you know, pour yourself a bath. Sometimes I say to people or, uh, you know, take yourself out to dinner this week. Do something nice for yourself. Okay, everybody. That's the show.